In a generation before the Trojan War, seven legendary champions of Argos waged war against the great city of Thebes. The legendary conflict became one of the most famed events of Greek mythology, with its story widely covered in epic poetry. In this episode, we go through the war of the seven against Thebes. Several decades before the events of the Trojan War, the city of Thebes was going through troubled times. The realm of King Epidus was hit by a plague. The gods were angry. The king's uncle and former regent, Creon, was dispatched to Delphi to seek help from the Pythian Oracle. When Creon returned, he brought the grim news. Thebans were getting punished by the gods because of the sins of their ruler. Oedipus had become king by killing his father and marrying his own mother. The sacred laws were violated and God Apollo demanded punishment for the Theban monarch. Oedipus was exiled from the city. The throne was to be split between his two sons Eteocles and Polynices. The deposed king, however, did not give up his claim to kingship peacefully. He refused to give blessing to his sons, instead cursing them to forever quarrel over the rule of Thebes. It did not take long for the curse to take effect, as Eteocles and Polynices almost instantly began their struggle for the throne. Eventually a deal was reached where the brothers would rule jointly, each holding the kingship for a year before switching authority with the other. However, when Eteocles was allotted to rule first, he refused to surrender the crown after his term expired. Instead, he used his position to gain support of the Thebans and expelled Polynices from the city. The exiled Polynices was desperate. It was his legitimate right to rule in Thebes, and yet he was banished from his home and left with nothing. The Theban went towards Peloponnese, to Argos. At that time, Argos was ruled by three dynasties, each represented with a respective Basileus. The three rulers of Argos were Adrastus, Iphis, and Amphiaros. The Argives welcomed the Theban prince with open arms. In addition to Polynices, Argos housed another exiled noble, Prince Tidius of Aetolia. Tidius himself was expelled from Calydon by King Agrius for committing murder of a fellow royal family member, either his brother or an uncle. The two guests thus met each other in the palace of Adrastus, but not before they quarreled over accommodation provided to them by the Argive king. As Adrastus calmed the two nobles, he noticed that Polynices wore a symbol of a lion and Tidius that of a boar. The king then recalled a prophecy given to him by the oracle, where he was to marry his two daughters to a lion and a boar respectively. Adrastus' two daughters were thus married to the two exiled princes, Argia to Polynices and Apele to Tidius. Adrastus further agreed to help both Polynices and Thedius seize their respective kingships. It is said that the two princes first went to Mycenae, the foremost kingdom of Peloponnese, in order to seek military backing. The Mycenaeans initially agreed to restore Polynices and Thebes and began their preparations. However, upon receiving ill omens of Zeus, they changed their mind and promptly aborted any potential campaign. Fortunately for Polynices, in Argos, Adrastus was still on board. The Argives alone would raise their army and march to Boeotia. Given that Thebes, the city of legendary Cadmus, was known for the seven gates on its wide walls, King Adrastus raised seven champions to head his army, one for each Cadmean gate. Besides Polynices and Thedius, the Argive champions were Capaneus, a warrior of immense strength and a son-in-law of Iphis. 
Hippomedon, a hero from Larna, bearing the image of a fire-breathing typhoon on his shield. Parthenopius of Arcadia, a young and ruthless prince, heading a contingent of his own companions. Eteoclus, an Argive prince and a son of King Iphis, and Amphiaras, a seer and a Basileus of Argos, a fellow co-ruler of Iphis and Adrastus. Amphiaras originally hesitated to join, having foreseen that the expedition was doomed to fail. He was eventually persuaded by his wife, Eryphele, who was a sister of Adrastus. Eryphele did so after she was gifted Necklace of Harmonia by Polynicus, a necklace that was forged by the gods and allowed any woman wearing it to be eternally young and beautiful. Little did she knew, the necklace also carried a divine spell, which brought great misfortune to all its owners, those being members of the royal house of Thebes from the previous generations. Nevertheless, Amphiaras was on board, and the army of Argos was ready for the campaign. Adrastus himself headed the expedition, although personally not counted as one of the champions. The Argives marched north. Upon passing through Nemea, the army stopped to get water. They encountered Hypsiphile, an nursemaid of Apheltes, an infant son of Zeus's priestly Cargus, who ruled over Nemea. As they asked Hypsiphile to get them to the nearby spring, she left the child unattended. Tragically, Apheltes was then bitten and killed by a serpent. Amphiaras interpreted this as yet another ill omen, signifying a potential catastrophe for the Argive expedition. He renamed the child Archimoros, meaning the beginning of doom. Nevertheless, the seven champions moved forward. They held funeral games in child's honor, which was the origin of the famed Nemean games of classical antiquity. As the army was entering Boeotia, they decided to send an embassy to the city in attempt to negotiate a peaceful resolution for the Theban throne dispute. The Argives decided to send Tedius. When the champion arrived to Thebes, he found the Cadmeans having a feast at the palace of Eteocles. According to Homer, and he went his way, and found the many sons of Cadmus feasting in the house of mighty Eteocles. Then, for all he was a stranger, the horseman Tedius feared not, all alone though he was, amid the many Cadmeans, but challenged them all to feats of strength, and in every one he vanquished them, such a helper was Athena to him. By the Cadmeans, gorgeous of horses, waxed wroth, and as he journeyed back, brought and set a strong ambush. Even fifty youths, and two were as leaders, Maion, son of Hymon, peer of the immortals, and Autophonus' son, Polyphontes, staunch in fight. But Tedius, even upon these, let loose a shame of fate, and slew them all, only one man suffered he to return home. Maion was sent forth in obedience to the portents of the gods, such a man was Tedius of Aetolia. According to Tradigianus Hillus, Polyphontes too was still alive by the time Argives attacked the city. Either way, evidently there was no peaceful resolution. The Argive army moved towards Thebes. Inside the city, the Thebans consulted Tiresias, a blind prophet of Apollo. The prophet foretold that should any of the Cadmean nobles, called the Spartoi, sacrifice their life to god Ares, the city would avoid destruction. Ultimately, it was Menoikeos, the son of Creon, who decided to give up his life for Thebes, as he committed suicide by throwing himself from the Theban walls. Thebans were now ready for battle. The Argives launched the attack from all sides. The Theban army likewise split up their forces. Seven defenders were assigned to each respective gate of the city. These were Melanippus, Polyphontes, Megareus, Hyperbius, 
Arctor, Lasthenes, and King Ithiocles himself. Although the Argives appeared confident of victory, they were soon to find out how drastically different their fate was. In fact, all the ill omens Amphiaras received throughout the campaign were coming to fruition. At the north gate, Arcadian hero Parthenopius attempted to breach the walls, but was mortally wounded by Periclamenus of Thebes. His contingent subsequently dispersed. At the Protate gate, Tedius II was cut down by Melanippus. He did, however, live to see the death of his killer, as Melanippus himself was slain by Amphiaras. When the Theban reinforcements arrived, together with Periclamenes, the Argive Basileus was chased by the Theban hero. As Periclamenes launched a spear into Amphiaras' back, Zeus reportedly intervened. Unfortunately for the Argives, it was to their further demise. The earth was split open, swallowing up Amphiaras, together with his chariot and charioteer. As the battle continued, Hippomedon attempted to retrieve Tedius's body. As his attempt was unsuccessful, the champion of Lerna continued the battle at the nearby river Ismenus. There, both Hippomedon and Prince Ateoclus met their end by the hand of a Theban named Leades. Hippomedon's helmet was then taken by certain Hypsaeus as a trophy, shortly before Hypsaeus himself was killed by Capaneus. Overconfident Capaneus then led a charge on the Cadmean walls. His arrogance, however, allowed him to shout that not even Zeus would stop him from bringing Thebes down. Then, a thunderbolt flashed from the sky and struck him dead as he was scaling the walls. Meanwhile, at the seventh gate of Thebes, Polynikis and Ethiocles finally met each other. It is here that the two brothers fulfilled the curse of their father. Both Polynikis and Ethiocles fell in battle, as the Argive army was finally broken down and decisively defeated. King Adrastus alone managed to escape. Despite victory, Thebans mourned the loss of their king Ethiocles. He was to be succeeded by his son Laodamas, who was still under age at the time. The regency was then once again bestowed upon Creon. What happened afterwards differs between the ancient sources, especially when it comes to the burial of the fallen Argives. In some versions of the story, Adrastus seeked help from the Athenians to retrieve the bodies of the fallen champions. This was accomplished by King Theseus of Athens, who used either force or diplomacy depending on the version. Either way, the expedition of the Seven against Thebes proved a complete disaster for the Argives. In Argos, Adrastus continued to rule as one of the three co-kings. The seized Amphiaras was succeeded by his son Amphilochus. King Ephesus' portion was eventually succeeded by Stenelus, a son of Ephesus' daughter Evadne and the seized Argive champion Capaneus. This new Argive generation was not content with the defeat and death of their fathers. Soon enough, they would come to be known as the Epigoni.